Hello everyone, this is Greg here and welcome to the Just A Meme podcast where we talk about the future of making money on the web. Today we have a really exciting pair of guests, Erica and Chris, joining us from Grant for the Web. Grant for the Web is a $100 million fund to boost open, fair and inclusive standards and innovation in web monetization. The fund is supported by Coil, Mozilla and the Creative Commons, so really good sponsors there. Welcome guys, really great to have you. Thanks for having us. Glad we could get this uh, scheduled in. I know you guys must be under the cosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so kind of jumping into like the background how did you guys end up coming together and working on grant for the web were you here from the beginning or was it something that was already rolling before you guys got in well i can jump in and erica can add in uh flavor and uh detail but did erica and i have known and worked together for a good amount of time we worked together when we were both at the mozilla foundation in various and various roles and working on on different teams probably the thing that together we're most known for working on is the mozilla festival over the years as well as other projects so we've known each other for quite some time i had a consultancy with a woman named christine prefontaine called loop design and innovation and eric we had hired erica to work alongside us. And in that process, we had the opportunity to respond to a call for people to work on this broad concept called grant for the web that, you know, Stefan Thomas and, and uh, cyber D's out there, as most people will know him, we're starting to see who could, who could think about this program together with them. So at Loop Design and Innovation, we put together a proposal and, you know, some ideas about how we might do it and think about it, et cetera, et cetera. We were lucky enough to, to get chosen to start the, that work. And in July of 2019, in a, in a kitchen dining room in Washington, D.C., we said CyberDs, Erica, Christine, myself, sat around the kitchen table with the with a whiteboard and, and kind of I don't know, kind of scoped the, the, the early origins of Grant for the Web. So Dees and Stefan definitely had the original kind of ideas and, and kind of quickly realized that they'd need someone to, to think about actually how to make a, a dream into a reality. So we took over in that kitchen in DC and from, from there, Erica and I have been involved in the, in the program. As the program had matured enough and Interledger Foundation formed, et cetera, et cetera, we, we moved into working on, on the program full time. But we've been there since the beginning, right, Erica? Yeah, it was, I have fond memories. It was a hot, muggy summer in DC. And we really just started from, from absolute zero of dreaming how we could put together this, this program and, and what it might look like and how we could. We, did, we didn't know, or I didn't know very much about web monetization, about the tech back then. So it was a, it was a steep learning curve, very interesting. And it just what a creative opportunity to be able to start at zero with, you know, with a large amount, a hundred million dollars to play with. It was a real privilege to, to, to be there. I was going to say that is a very well-funded startup <laughs> by any, <laughs> by any stretch. <laughs> Slightly different, obviously. Um, yeah. But so it was like Grant for the Web and Interledger kind of the first exposure you had to cryptocurrencies, I guess, as a whole. I know it's not purely a crypto thing, but I know it leverages it in some ways a lot of the time. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I do want to be clear, you know, it's, it's funny, this issue of this is a crypto project. Is it not? We like to frame it as not, and I think the, the or not exclusively, it better say, mm. that, you know, the grant for the web framing and context, you know, really is important because while a lot of this is built with cryptocurrency or the ideas behind cryptocurrency, things like the ledger, et cetera, this really is sort of uh, uh, currency agnostic and really is about the web, right? It's bringing these kind of ideas and technologies to the web in a way. So that is such an interesting question that I think we probably need to talk about more about how it's the same and how it's different. But to answer your question, outside of just sort of, you know, working within technology and social change, obviously knew about blockchain, knew about cryptocurrency, but at a very kind of broad level that never mm -hmm. really worked explicitly with that before. Okay. No, oh, cool. Yeah. So I know, I know you guys are big proponents of, like you say, promoting new business models on the web, inclusivity, fairness, open standards. So who else is involved in that project? I know when we went through the grant progress, there was this amazing independent review board and stuff like that. Well, we have a, an executive council made up of members from Coil, Creative Commons and Mozilla. And they help us with sort of the high level programmatic design. And they've been great. They've been with us since the beginning and they've been great contributors and collaborators. 
helping us think about sort of the big picture ecosystem and how our funding streams can support and grow, you know, the big moving pieces of web monetization. But we also have different advisory bodies. And, and, and one that's really fantastic is our panel of independent judges who sort of come in with a, a, a bit of a different perspective. They're drawn from quite a broad swath of, you know, arts, tech, culture, and their contributions to thinking about who we should fund and, and why have been absolutely invaluable and really impacted the direction the program has taken, I'd say. Talking about the first batch, then they reviewed the grantee submissions and stuff like that. Do you have kind of like a handful of projects that you really like what they're doing? I know, I, I think I mentioned specifically that distributed media lab was one of your largest investments like where are they up to it was quite significant for you guys so it'd be cool to get an update on them sure no we're, we're super excited about the work that they're doing but we're, we're super excited about the work that all of our grantees are doing right we don't want to pick a favorite child even though we may have <laughs> 120 some odd children one of the aha moments that we've had recently is how much work value creativity and innovation comes from the smaller grants as well and sometimes to the value is, is better than the, the larger grants. And that's not a, a content, uh, a, a commentary on distributed media lab, who I will talk about and, and Erica can add some as well. But I do want to say that like the smaller grants, you know, they're, they're more agile, they're more, you know, sometimes can be more creative. So we're getting a lot of value from some of our smaller grants as well, but distributed media lab is also, we're super excited to have them, as you say, sort of our, one of our larger investments. And what they've been up to lately is that is pretty exciting. They're going to be rolling out one of their first experiments soon. And it, what's super exciting is that how do you use web monetization in, in Interledger protocol as almost a back of the house distribution system in collaborative or shared revenue and resource projects. And what's really interesting here is that, you know, they come from the journalism space and the tech space. And, you know, at different times, journalism, big journalism has been able to have a plan to share technology or, or those kind of things. And sometimes there's editorial sharing and sometimes there's revenue sharing. What this do would actually bring all of those things things into together into one system. So a, a philosophy and an interest in sharing editorial content and, and, and you know, leveraging different content in different platforms and in different regions, so on and so forth, but also a financial and technology infrastructure that would be doing those things on, on the back end and making it more frictionless and seamless. So what's really exciting at the big ideas level about what Distributed Media Lab is doing is that actually can it create the infrastructure where, where big and small, quite frankly, editorial you know, magazines, newspapers, online sites can actually share more information and be compensated from it and with a, a, a deeper relationship with their consumers that way as well. So lots of interesting things there. Erica, anything to add? You know, Distributed Media Lab is so interesting and complex that sometimes I'm not sure we, we get it completely right. And I would actually suggest you having the team, you know, that might be a future podcast is having Dave on. But what did I miss on that one, Erica? No, I think you got Distributed Media Lab right. And yeah, I, I second, you know, Dave and Sam are, are, are really sort of visionary thinkers in this world. So I, I recommend chatting with them. Very interesting. But back to the grantees were, were most, you know, were especially proud of or excited about, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with what Chris said. We can't pick a favorite, but I do want to call out, you know, I, I love seeing the prototypes that people build. I love seeing the research that people are generating. And producing, but one of my one of my favorite things is when when teams or people uh, sort of hit 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 blockers or hit hit roadblocks, hit the wall at some point, and are able to talk about that and and really explain where the turnaround point was or the end point was they could get to in the ecosystem, and you know that that generally ends up being a, a, a piece of technology. Um, that just simply doesn't exist yet or limitations of the current existing technology and why that's so exciting and why in a way, I don't want to call them failures, but the grants that, that sort of struggle at the end or struggle to meet their final objectives and are able to talk about that honest, that's fantastic because it, it shapes what we will do next with our, you know, our grant making funds. It's really identified areas in the ecosystem that clearly need to be further developed for this whole 
crazy thing to, to work. And, you know, whether that's big, big picture stuff like wallets or, you know, more providers out there like Coil or whether it's smaller pieces, just, you know, plugins and, and little add-ons that need to be created. I'm kind of, I have a special spot in my heart for those grantees that didn't achieve a hundred percent of their goals. Yeah. I think that was one of the amazing things about going into the process for us was you, you guys were very clear that you expect kind of failures along the way and pivots and all these kind of stuff. And I think every time you hit a block, you create a bit of tooling or something that either works it works around it and then you report back or, you know, you go a different direction sort of thing. And I think watching the guys and through the people I've talked to as well, that's been a constant theme. And, I, and yeah, I think you just figure out so much, especially in this kind of distributed way you've done it over 120 children, as you put it, as you put it, um, the, just the learning output of that is just huge. Yeah, it's so early with this technology and this ecosystem and even just conceptually, right? The sort of new business models on the web. I mean, I think in the last, I don't know, I'm going to get this wrong to a degree, but let's call it the last five to 10 years, you know, traditional dominant for business practices, big capitalism, which for a long time didn't understand how to make money on the web, right? You, you go back and, you know, for a long time, it was like the web is cool, but you know, there's no, there's no revenue model there. So that obviously has changed. And what, unfortunately, what has changed is that it was just the dominant models figuring out a way to replicate themselves on the web, not models that are more driven by the web or, or, or more like the web or built on the web architecture, you know, so none of it really felt like how the, the, the web actually worked. And so this is all so conceptually, technically, socially new that we knew that these projects, we knew that most of these projects were going to fail, you know, quote unquote, from s some particular metric. And that was actually, that was actually a good thing because we need that learning. And where we're are right now with the program is we're actually starting to look at, okay, so what's working, what's not working. And that helps us start to be more targeted and specific about what we want to make grant make towards, right? So it's starting to tell us this stuff is actually going pretty well probably continue to invest in it, but maybe incrementally, or maybe helping to, you know, support where then there's other swaths of the ecosystem where there really is, no, you know, whether it's different web monetization providers or different wallet options or, or different socialization techniques or different communication techniques for converting users. So now we're starting to understand where those larger gaps are so we can kind of sustain and fertilize where there's good momentum and what things people can do now and take like, a little bit of a more incremental approach to supporting that. And then we can say, oh, we got a gap here. So how do we actually focus our grant making to, to help? You know, we're not going to be, we're not gonna, it's not a magic wand to solve these things, but I think we can be, we can be a solvent to, you know, starting to, to help the gaps in the ecosystem to collapse. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a really exciting, like I say, it's a really exciting project. I think the, the breadth of it is amazing. Uh, I don't know how you guys internalize that and to put all your frameworks together, but I'm sure you're working hard to make it. So I guess that kind of brings us on to like the next steps. Are you doing, are you thinking about more kind of public calls for submissions? I know the guys I've been talking to, we don't want to lose that knowledge that we've built up and stuff. So obviously a lot of interest in kind of getting follow-ons, but I, th I think pre previously you said that it will be announced soon. Is there any kind of updates on that or are you guys still working on it sort of thing all of the above <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> no but i think we well i'll say a few things definitively yep we will have another open call for proposals out in summer 2021 so and we probably and we will also have some other grant streams that will be kicking off one of our big goals coming into this year and then really beyond the program is Actually, how do we have a calendar of opportunities that people know and can plan around? Where we're very clearly articulating what we need or what we're asking for, but we're also not just asking for one thing in one call. So the, the short answer is, is, is yes, we will have more stuff out. We probably have a steady drumbeat of opportunities over the next six to 12 months. And then hopefully some version of that that just starts to replicate itself. You know, we've been in this startup mentality for, you know, basically going on two years, if you go back to that, you know, sitting around the, the dining room table in DC, but, in, you know, and we've only actually given out grants for just about a year, just about a year right yeah. now. So yeah. we're going to integrating all that, that learning so that we can actually be more systemic. 
you know, we realize that right now we've been a little bit, you know, kind of people aren't quite sure what we're doing next and all of that thing. And that's because we're not quite sure or weren't quite sure what we're doing next, right? We're in like kind of intense startup and building mode, which I don't want to say we're fully exiting out of now, but I think we are starting to, okay, what systems now can be there? What can people expect? What messaging do we want to put out there? How do we expand the ecosystem of, and partners who are contributing to what the program can be? So I do feel like we're in a bit of a growth spurt here over the next six to 12 months where a year from now, someone might be saying, oh, I understand what Grant for the Web is going to do over the coming year and why. Yeah, there's always, a, in any uh, <laughs> startup or anything, there's these growing pains. And yeah, it's just one of those things, isn't it, that you have to find a way to scale it. I, I was going to ask, like, the next calls, I imagine you're going to get inundated with probably double, hopefully, maybe triple, quadruple, <laughs> the amount of submissions. <laughs> are you guys thinking about that? Uh -oh. are, you, are you nervous <laughs> about it? <laughs> what did you learn from last time that you can kind of carry forward, that sort of stuff? <laughs> it makes me nervous when you say quadruple. We were really happy with, with, the, with the numbers we got in our first open call. And I, I think a change that might come moving forward is a bit more focus. Our first open call was very, very broad uh, and encompassed both you know tech builds and content plays. So we'll look going forward at being, because we'll be having multiple open calls, you know, sort of coming over the next uh, months and or years, how to look at each one as a unique opportunity with its own specific focus. I did want to add something that was part of your earlier question for, for a second, grants to current grantees or, or grantees that already received one round of funding that as, as we're planning and thinking, they're definitely a group we're considering. We really see a lot of value in helping to continue their work, whether on the same project or on a new project. So, you know, the design's still happening internally, but that's a group we're specifically thinking about as we design our upcoming opportunities. I, uh, no, I know for us, uh, we were chatting before and I kind of said, like, we've kind of train these dev guys up they've got good knowledge of web monetization brand new to the ecosystem hadn't heard of it before sort of thing so it it kind of would be a shame to lose them but you got, I knew, we knew you guys were thinking about it <laughs> sort of thing i'm sure you're really <laughs> completely aware of it so no it's, it's really good to hear and i think a lot of the listeners um will be grantees so i'm sure they'll be really chuffed hanging on every word <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um yeah no we that's such an interesting question. And so without being able to share more details right now, because we don't have them, but we, we're we in a process now where lots of our, our grants are kind of maturing, right? They're kind of coming towards an end or they're publishing some, you know, kind of two thirds of the way through reflections and grant reports. Some of the stuff that we had come through our curated grant stream early on is also kind of been producing. We've just been reveling in what the, the work that's been happening, right? And so also realizing that these are the, you know, these are the cutting edge folks thinking about this, right? There's not, I mean, I'm not saying there aren't others, but we have activated like probably the, you know, the, the bleeding edge of people thinking about this technology and how to use it. So we want to honor that, right? We want to, we want to think of ways that, that we continue that. We don't want to just like activate a hundred noobs every time with our grant making, right? That, that we, we, we wouldn't work that way. So we do want to figure out ways to sustain opportunities for current grantees. That can look like a lot of different things. It could look like other grants. It could be like suggesting that they apply in future calls. It could be coming up with some more kind of ways that people not really apply, but ask for additional funds to extend. It could be, you know, things that we haven't been able to do yet, right? So obviously COVID, but, you know, we, we would love to do some physical convenings and some, you know, like, you know, so there's also some the ways that we want to bring people together virtually and physically towards that end. So there's lots of things that we want to do to support the, the projects that we've already funded. And that was one of the reasons we did our second chance call for proposals. So one of the reasons we haven't had a call for proposal kind of in market, so to speak, since last summer really is because we opted to give the folks that weren't successful in the first round an opportunity to reapply. So that wasn't open per se. We didn't advertise it. It was only available to those, but we did run a whole other version of that process over these last couple of months. We'll be announcing them. Not sure when this airs, but you know, probably be announcing those projects. Everyone will know by midsummer, and those projects will kick off. So, and it was the same motivation. It was these 
projects that weren't quite successful this round are still going to be further ahead in their thinking, have thought about this deeper, are more active in the community than folks that might be, we might catch on the first time, the first time or just internet. So we wanted to respect and honor that. And that's why we did that second round. Yeah. Although I do acknowledge that that's, I think to the broader community, it probably meant it's, you know, it meant we, we were a little bit more quiet than we actually were kind of in the back of the house. Yeah. Erica, I was chatting a lot. So, you know, maybe you might have thoughts on stuff that I babbled on about. We covered the main parts, you know, just being able to talk about how proud we are of our grantees and their accomplishments or hitting roadblocks and or hitting roadblocks and, and sort of previewing what we can about the steps forward. I think, I don't think I have anything more specific to add other than the annoying stay tuned, stay tuned for more details. <laughs> we'll announce them as soon as we can. Yeah. I, I mean, just from my, my, my own viewpoint, having chatted to, what is it? 13 podcasts we're now on and wider in just the community for su such a breadth and kind of depth of, knowledge and experiences yeah just connecting with people like you say on the leading edge of this stuff has been such a great experience so yeah really looking forward to what comes next well i was going to say there is one thing we can we can share one of the things we're also thinking about as we design the program going forward is these opportunities for community members to 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 talk with each other that's something we've heard loud and clear that people want to connect in more ways than the community forum. The community forum has been successful in, in many ways and, and we're really happy with it as an ongoing tool, but we've heard that people want more. So we're thinking about, you know, what could community calls look like? What could demo days look like? What could skill shares look like? And these can be really led by grantees and other people in the community. It doesn't necessarily have to be the program team running and managing everything. And, I know there's an opportunity to be coming up to grantees are, are sort of having an informal hangout on the program of the platform Skittish, which is a grant for the web funded, a web monetized event platform. So that's exciting to see different ways grantees are coming together. And we're really thinking about ways to support, encourage, uh, and promote that because we've heard that as a need from the community. And, and to build off what Erica's saying, we're going to need help. You know, I think it's only the, th it's really only the three of us running Grant for the Web to a large degree. I mean, there's others involved. Our executive director, Brianna Marbury, at Interledger Foundation is obviously super involved. And then our executive council and, you know, Coil, Creative Commons, and Mozilla. So I don't want to say that we're, you know, that we have lots of smart people helping us to think about this. But in terms of running Grant for the Web day to day, it really is just just the three of us. And so we have, you know, I'm not whining, but we have some capacity issues. We can only build stuff so fast. And we're looking to do things like staff up and build up, you know, as the program matures, you know, think of ways in which that, that can happen. But even if we doubled in size, you know, by the end of this phone call, you know, the Zoom call, we'd still need and want and want to have on-ramps for community curation. Um, and community leadership and community facilitation. So I think that the our web monetization community space built on Deb's forum tool is is was a great start. It's been in our minds a, a wild success. People are using it. We can do public grant reporting. We can live by some of our values. It's web monetized, so it actually becomes like a really interesting web monetization playground, honestly, for folks that where you actually have web monetized users to a degree, which I know is a problem in other places. But we need people to curate community calls. We need people people to help us to sort of get people to together and to give reasons to 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 gather and to want to curate some of the meaning making of what they're seeing from the grant making. So we need those partnerships. We need that collaboration. We need that uh, community energy, which we're getting. So I don't want to say that, you know, but we could always use more. And I want it to be very overt that, you know, Erica and Aisha and I are happy to get out of the way and let others pick up some of these pieces. So please don't think out there in Grant for the Web land and beyond that we feel proprietary ownership out of lots of those community parts. We would love to have people stepping up and doing some of those things, much like you've done, Greg, with these podcasts. So, you know, I think that, so that we're going to, for this to work, we're going to need kind of more of that. And we want to just make it clear and we will make it clearer that it's an open door for for people owning and picking up pieces of the community. Thinking. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see kind of maybe non-technical community calls as well as deep dive technical ones led by some of the guys that are working on the, I mean, even just thinking in our team, I know Ike, the developer, the full stack developer we got has done workshops and stuff in crypto world before. So I'm sure, sorry, Ike, I just uh, volunteered you for this, but uh, I'm sure he'll be up for it. 
<laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're thinking about probably having something a month and, and, and sort of what, to what you were talking about, probably have like a community call, which will be tech and non-tech. It'll just, you know, but it'll be part of broader. And, and we're really, we're looking to have guest curators for those community calls. And then also maybe alternate that with, with every other month with demo calls, you know, and line up people to do demos and, and to show off stuff and to talk and, 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 and ignite conversations that would hopefully then continue past that demo call. But yeah, we want to do that. What's that balance of the, the deeper dive on tech or technical aspects. And then the, and also the deeper dive and acknowledgement that this is a, this is a social movement as much as a technical one. Yeah. Oh, it sounds really, really promising. Yeah. I mean, so that's it for me guys. If you, Last, last chance comments. <laughs> I know we've been on a while now, so keen to <laughs> let you get back. <laughs> I just want to say, you know, thank you for having us on, Greg. And, and we love the, the work that, that you and your team have done. We really, Greg and, and his team and the team are a perfect example of the kind of proactive grantees that, you know, not only see the value in this, but also enjoy active, you know, activating and collaborating in the community. I mean, we want this to be a joyful, you know, we want our community stuff to be joyful and, and we want people to be intrinsically motivated to participate. We understand that the, the promise or the reality of grants is an extrinsic motivator, but, you know, hopefully we're, we're nurturing both forms of motivation for folks. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll definitely say I've, I've seen that in the chats I've had and yeah, for sure. The collaboration and stuff, I'm working quite closely with Casey. I've, a few chats every so often with Adam from, what is it? Uh, Good day, fam. That's it. <laughs> and yeah, it's just been amazing to see the, like I say, the breadth of people here. So yeah, I think keep doing what you're doing and we'll uh, <laughs> wrap up there. So right. yeah, I mean, thanks for coming on. I'll leave links in the description for anyone who wants to find out more. And I think this kind of wraps up our first season of Just a Mean podcast. And I'll focus on kind of web monetization. So for anyone who's listening, uh, please do get, get involved. Go check out the links. And yeah, we'll see you in the forum. And thanks again, guys, for coming on. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. Cheers.